once that person gets to the point where, and you can look for the protocols online, but once they get to that 50, 60, 70 PSI, 50 PSI on this is 400 newtons. So that magic number for humans, 400 newtons, magic is happening even before that. It's probably not any kind of capsular deformation, but it's probably, again, the patellofemoral taping stuff. People will say all the time, oh man, it feels so good. And I'm like, yeah, it's only at 20, geez. So they'll get, it'll be even better later. But once they get to the point where they go from 30 degrees to 20 degrees to 10 degrees, and then they use it all the way closed, so now they're in relative extension in supine, then they can turn the binding so the hook is now at their medial malleoli, and then their malleolus, and then they are hooking in that way. And then what they'll do is they can control how much extension. In this case, the, uh, the hip track is not against their sit bone now. I have it up against the wall. You can see how it's butt up against a wall, a chair, a table. So they'll be creative at home or in the clinic. And they'll, uh, they'll put it against something. And then make sure they don't just go into trunk flexion. They have to actually move their pelvis forward as well to get that extension. And then you can see how there might be a feeling of a valgus stress on their knee. And so I'll take a pillow and I'll put it in there. And when people have that old meniscus surgery that they never rehab right and they're stuck, they're lacking five degrees of extension of their knee. And they go, because you want them to be in knee extension so they can pass through the knee to get to the hip better, right? But this isn't designed for knees, but a funny thing that we've seen happen is that they'll say, oh, it's kind of irritating my knee. So we'll just take a dish towel or something to bring the ground up to them. So we'll put something underneath their popliteal fossa just to bring the ground up to them. And then all of a sudden they'll say, hey, my knee's starting to feel better. And let's peel a layer of that onion away. And all of a sudden they're saying, my knee's straighter and feeling better. Is that okay? I was like, I'll take it. I, you know, it's like, you, you know, you can't, you're not treating their knee, but technically if they have a loss of extension and there is some opportunity or possibility there, it's gonna improve. If it doesn't improve, there's no opportunity, right? It's pretty straightforward. It's probably a bony, a really bad bony thing at that point. But you get the idea. You can use this in extension as you wish. I have them flex that, I love when I point to the screen like you can see where I'm going. <laughs> I have them flex that knee because you're gonna kind of start to crank them in extension. If they've developed that kind of compensatory painfully hypermobile L5-S1 or whatever to kind of get their extension and gait, then flex that bottom knee just in hopes of having a little bit of unloading there too. All right, so quickly going through this, the next analogy is the antibiotic analogy. How many people when they have an infection, they take their first antibiotic and they're like, ah, it's not working, right? <laughs> And don't you love when those patients come in after that horrible frozen shoulder, you evaluated them, which is most of that visit, and then you show them a few little things to do and you mobilize them, and they come for the second and they go, look, I don't, I don't think it's working. And you're just like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be fun. You know, it's, you have to educate them. So antibiotics take time. You can't do one psoas release or one mulligan or one hip track and expect all of a sudden some magic to happen. Now you wanna feel, what, the, what do they feel during that time? And some people say, I feel better. Some people say, I feel sore. But you really want to look at the longer term. Okay, so the antibiotic analogy, write that one down. <laughs> and my favorite, the flossing analogy, right? Patients come in and they say, yeah, I'm really kind of hurting from that stuff you did. You're like, yeah, yeah. You know, you're looking sensitive and you're like, well, are we gonna keep doing that? You're like, yeah, actually, we're gonna keep doing that. Because, <laughs> um, you know, Mr. Johnson, when you floss, your gums bleed, right? Well, yeah. Do you go to the ER? Do you go to the doctor? Well, no, I, I keep, gosh darn it, all right. You keep flossing, you irritate that tissue, you muck it up, it remodels, and it's healthier afterwards. If patients don't have you to help them through that pain, to educate them, they think they're hurting themselves. And the tragedy is they never get over the top of it, and then all those bad things happen to them. We're the ones that are educated to know, eh, actually, that's a little bit too much bleeding. You're kind of gushing blood from your gum, Mr. Johnson. You gotta chill out a little bit, okay? We're the ones that know how much fire to have and how much fire not to have, okay? So you gotta let them know that that's normal. We're not talking about doms here. We're talking about it is pain. It's not muscle soreness, and it's okay. I don't know anybody that has a frozen shoulder or a frozen hip who has 100% pain-free rehab. If you can give, show me a pain-free frozen shoulder rehab, please teach me how to do it. I mean 100% pain free, I've never seen that. And then the orientation test, you'll see that on the, on the uh, website. Basically what I like to do is with anything, we wanna check with any new patient, ankle, knee, cervical, manual therapy, exercise, we wanna see how sensitive and how irritable their hip is, right? And so with hip track, what we'll do is we'll put them on a certain thing, you'll see it on the website. It just tells us when they get up, I say, you're gonna feel one of three things. You're gonna feel better right away, more buoyant. They'll come off hip track, they'll walk in and go, oh man, that's so good. 
And you tell them, of course, well, it's only there for five minutes, antibiotics, blah, blah, blah. But if they get up and say, nah, I don't really feel anything, like, okay, we can go a little bit stronger next time. If they get them, they're like, oh man, that's not cool, man. And then you just tell them, all right, that's how sense they are. They're not hurt. You're not gonna hurt somebody with OA by doing long axis traction, okay? Thanks, Dan.